Hello and welcome to another video by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. If any of you have watched my previous two uploads, you'll know that I've recently spent a week at the Raspberry Pi Foundation doing work experience. As you might have seen, I managed to pin down the elusive Clive Beale for an interview whilst I was there. However, he was not the only one who failed to escape the grasps of the Raspberry Pi Guy. I also got the chance to ask Gordon Hollingworth, Director of Engineering at the Foundation, a couple of the community's most pressing questions. He's an old hand at interviews, so hear what he has to say. Um, so last time that I was here, um, you talked to us a little bit about the DSi display, and uh, because we're quite a bit further into the future now, I was wondering if you, and so quite a few people in the community, whether you could share with us any more details about the upcoming DSi display. Yep, so uh, yeah, we originally wanted to get the DSi display out around about this time, but um, unfortunately we've had a number of projects get into the way. For example, B+, quite considerably um, pushed us back for our timescales. So right now it's still looking, um, it's still looking uh, difficult to predict exactly when it's going to be, but we're hoping uh, to still. It's it's short term. We we are we've made you know we've made uh, progress on display. Um, it's working. Uh, we're basically ready to go into production, but um, it just depends on how long everything you know how, how all of our other products stack up in terms of manufacturing. So, uh, is there any more work being done on complete on the complete documentation for all of the features of the BCM chip at the heart of the Raspberry Pi? So yeah, we've got it currently is um, we've got uh, some documentation going through the process. Uh, this takes some time, and we're still not sure exactly how long it'll be left. But that basically covers pretty much every register, every peripheral inside inside the Broadcom chip. Um, which is, it's a large quantity of documentation and it's very complex, uh, which is why it's taking time. Uh, you know, we're looking at like a document of like say 600 pages, so it's going to take quite a long time to, to get that all proved out, but it will, it will happen. So the Model B Plus Raspberry Pi has some interestingly shaped wires coming from uh, around the processor and above the HDMI uh, logo. Uh, these are a kind of a zigzag shape and I was wondering, and so are quite a few people in the community, what is the reason for not actually making them straight? Yeah, so the problem is that you've got the processor, um, uh, which then has some balls underneath it, which is where the signals come out. And then you've got a HDMI connector, which then has uh, physical you know, positions where the wires come out. And you have to wire um, this ball across to here, and for example, maybe this ball across to here. So what you obviously can't do that directly, so what you actually have to do is, um, for example, uh, you would have you know, one going across this way and then the other one coming across um, and going around it. Now the problem there is that the path length for these two different signals is then different and that's actually important. Uh, you know, um, electrical signals travel at uh, very high speeds, but they are still traveling at speed and therefore, if you have a different path length than the, you know, down two, you know, sig two signals traveling down two different paths with two different path lengths, then the signals will arrive at different times. And it's very important with these types of signals, especially very high frequency signals, is that those, those paths, or that all the signals arrive at exactly the same time because a lot of the electronics depends upon that. So what we do instead is, uh, you know, on this one, uh, we actually, we actually zigzag it. And that actually increases the length of this path to match the length of the, of the other path. In fact, that's not exactly how it works, but that's not exactly the, you know, the, 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 the size of it and what have you, but, but that's basically the reason why we zigzag paths. And it's the same with any high-speed communication system. If you have a look on any, you know, on a motherboard or any computer, then if you're talking to PCI interfaces or to S, an SD RAM or anything, uh, anything where there's very high speed buses, then you will see sort of wiggly zigzag lines where the where the path length is matched. So there have been some murmurings from the Raspberry Pi community, and Ebony even confirmed this in a podcast, that the Raspberry Pi Model A is uh, due for a revamp as the Model A Plus, with some uh, added improvements considering the B Plus is now out. I was just wondering if you could confirm this and maybe give us some details if you could. <laughs> uh, so yes, we are working on A plus. Um, the you know it's it's at that point where upon it's similar to the, the to, you know it's one of the other products that is in the pipeline for going into manufacture. 
So realistically, um, you know, the timescales are again, uh, uh, you know, we, we can't be exact at the moment. Um, but yeah, we're working on it at the moment. So with the release of the new B+, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation then released a specification for new add-on boards called HATs. And part of the specification for a new add-on board to be called a HAT is the fact that it needs EEPROM. So why do HATs need EEPROM? Could you okay. explain a bit for us? Okay, so the one problem that we have at the moment with the with Raspberry Pi, especially with the Model B and back, is that there's no way of knowing whether or not you've attached anything to the device to the board. Um, and one of the problems with that is number one is you don't get to automatically load the software correctly for it. Um, the other thing is you could go driving pins that that um, that are actually being driven by that by the the plug on board itself. So the EEPROM on the hat board is first of all for identification. It's got a you know an ID, a, a vendor ID, and a and a product ID. Um, in fact, it's got a, like a GUID, a globally unique identifier identifier that you can create and add in into uh, into the into the EEPROM. From that, um, you know we can then write software. In the future, we can then write software to make sure that the correct software is loaded up when you plug that in automatically for you. Uh, it also defines you have the ability to load up a, a, a device tree file um, which the Linux kernel understands and it can then make sure it loads up the correct drivers for that hat. Um, so yeah, basically it's all about making things just, you just plug it in and then it will work out the box. That's, that's the reason we say to add the, add the EEPROM. Overall it's not a huge um, cost adder but it does mean that, that we'll be able to make significantly better products in future and make, you know, make things just work. Yeah. So uh, I asked Clive Beale, the um, part of the education team at the foundation, if you had to be stuck on a desert island with somebody out of the Raspberry Pi Foundation staff, who would it be? And his reply was Emma. I'm now asking Gordon, who as I said before is part of the engineering team, who he would have to be stuck on a desert island with and he's actually drawn something to help him decide and he's now going to explain his reasoning in the classical engineer fashion. Yeah, I think first of all there's one point which is no matter what happens I'm not going to be stuck on a desert island, I'm either going to be, I'm going to be escaping from a desert island or dying on a desert island so I'm going to, I'm going to choose escaping so basically I feel like I've, got, I've put together my plan uh, which is, you know, I need to cross the sea. So number one, I need sort of some, some mechanism for the direction. I need that. Um, I need to make some uh, a boat or a raft to get away. So I need wood. I need some mechanism for making rope, some cloth or clothing material that I can use for a, for a sail. Um, or, and yeah, some magnetic material for a, for a compass. And then I also need to provide food and water and shelter and, and some mechanism of signaling if, if something uh, happens by to, to pick me up. Um, overall, I think if you have a look at each one of these, basically what I need is another engineer. Uh, I basically have two engineers at Raspberry Pi at the moment, actually three today, but let's pretend two. Um, and out of those, I think I probably shall choose Jonathan, who had, well, like, I poached from the North Sea. He was uh, working on uh, oil platforms in the North Sea. Um, so I think he probably knows more about, about um, you know, about basically, um, yes. Uh, survival in sea, and there, there, that would be my 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 answer.